At the time, I was living on the, on the coast of Southern California, a little town called Solana Beach. And I had a one room that was attached to a one car garage. It was built like in the 1940s. It was just really tiny. I mean, you could barely get a car in the garage, but it was my workshop. It was fabulous. I just had a space to be able to work in. And I had to kind of be a little careful because, you know, tools make noise and so I had to be careful not to disturb the neighbors, but it all worked out and neighbors were very supportive and, and they liked what I was doing actually. So because they came by and check it out. And so little by little, I, I, I was making flutes and I was going to festivals and um, art shows and, and just had a little booth there. And, and, and I mean, at that time, there were people going by, what are those things, you know? And, and I would just teach people how to play. I realized, I said, no, you know, I don't really, I don't want to sell these things. I just want to go ahead and teach people. And if they're interested, they'll get one. And that worked that way. It was amazing. I never really sold a fly. I said, hey, you want to learn it? I'll teach you how to learn And they just, many of them came back and, and they walked, they went home with one. And, and it, it was, it was a joy to watch because you can see in their eyes they're starting to play and you go, oh my god this is really is easy and you know went home and, and played um, and then I, I I had to I had to move uh, things were you know just changing and I and I moved to a place in, in more inland in Southern California called Valley Center and um, they, and there was a, a lady there that had this big barn I mean, it was this cool old barn and I used to call it the flute barn and I moved into there and and it was great because it was real funky and, and it had a, it just had some really neat energy about it. So that, and, and it was nice to be able to make flutes in there because they all had the, the, the and, and the sound in there when I was playing, it was just echoes, it was really cool. And I kept continue doing, you know, festivals and uh, art shows. And <clears throat> then I, you know, I, I realized, yeah, you know, I, I, I was working seven days a week. I, on the weekends, I would go to the festivals, and during the middle of the week, I'd make flutes. And I was great with that. I was so ecstatic that I was able to, I enjoyed myself so much. I didn't care about working seven days a week. I did that for like three or four years. And I, but then one day, I, I, <clears throat> I was talking to a friend, and he said, how long are you going to be able to do this? Because <laughs> I never see you. You're always, you know, you're either working or you're doing festivals. And... <clears throat> So I, I, I said, okay, I said, yeah, that's a good point, you know. And so at some point it, it would make sense to, to see if I can maybe find other channels. And so, and, and I thought about maybe I, maybe I can get flutes into, into a couple of stores, you know, and, and, and see what, what they can do with the flutes. And I, and, and I, but unfortunately when you do that, you're, you're really, I mean, you've got to really cut your prices, way, you know, you're, you're way down because they have to kind of make a, a living off of the product that you give, get to them. But I said, okay, well, I'll try it for a year. And if in a year I still have money in the bank, I'll just keep going. If I don't, I'll do what I'm, you know, go back to what I was doing. And I, I did the combination of that and it worked. And it, it, uh, a lot of, uh, many of the stores really in, uh, were successful at, at presenting the flutes of people. And so that all, that all kind of came together. It was really kind of cool. And in the process of all that, um, I became a little bit dissatisfied with um, where I was living um, because I, I really enjoy nature. I enjoy um, just being out, out and about, go on hikes and, and something really drove me. I said, okay, go check it out. You know, let's go see what else is there in the world. So I went to New Mexico, I went through New Mexico, I went through Arizona and just kind of look for a place that sort of resonated, you know. And I was doing a, 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 a festival, an art festival, in a place called Tubac, Arizona. It's kind of a resort town in southern Arizona. And I, this lady was coming in to play the flute. And I was mentioning it to her. And she, she, you know, she said, where are you from? And I said, well, I'm kind of looking around, you know, to see what else, what, where, where it might be kind of a fun place to settle in. And she said, well, have you, ever, have you been to uh, Patagonia? And I said, no, never heard of it, you know. So she said, it's only about an hour from here. And after the festival, I went up and, and, and came, drove up into the mountains here, and wow, I just immediately fell in love with it. Matter of fact, I, I had a, a VW van, and I just pulled off the side of the road because I became so emotional, I had tears in my eyes. Oh my God, this place is just amazing. And it just had resonated with me. 
And <clears throat> so I, I moved a year later, in beginning of 1997, I moved uh, to Patagonia, Arizona. And I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to do it because the town is 850 people. And, you know, how many flutes can you make? But I still traveled to making festivals and, and doing festivals and, um, and went ahead and, and still worked with the, store, with the stores that, uh, that put flutes in their, uh, in their collection. So it, it all kind of worked out. And it, uh, little by little, it, you know, because at that time, there really wasn't the internet, there wasn't email. It was still the beginning of it all. And, but I did get a lot of um, mail and, and sometimes phone calls of people saying, oh my God, this, this instrument just brought so much joy into my life and really changed my life. And, and so I made a decision. I, I, I wanted to, my, my goal was to really turn as many people as I could onto this instrument. I really, you know, to introduce them as many as I, because I got so much, I get so much joy out of it personally. And many people that I that have gotten flutes and, and the feedback that I really made it my mission. I said, no, let's let's just do it. Let's 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 move forward and get to and turn as many people on as you possibly can. And that journey kind of culminated into you know obviously the internet and you know and, and that made a, a big difference being able to introduce the flute to the world in general. You know. And so it's been an amazing, just an amazing ride because it's so wonderful to be able to do something that really changes people's lives, that really it contributes to their lives. It's not like I'm doing that person. I, I sort of feel like I'm a tool. I, I, I make these, uh, these beautiful flutes and I was given this journey and I'm really grateful for it. And then it goes on to others who really get so much out of it and have fun with it. And that's been my flute journey. <laughs>